So the piece that we're doing, like I said earlier, is called Quarantine Miniatures, which uh, is a pandemic project for you, uh, yeah. Mark. So if you could spend just a couple seconds telling us about the genesis of those in particular, and then we'll move into number 16. <laughs> Certainly. So it's the end of March 2021 now, so just over a year ago. Um, is when the the shutdown, the global shutdown, really kind of got serious for all of us outside of you know China and Italy. Um, we were all we 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 were all there, right? So we know that none of us knew how long this was going to last. I was foolishly thinking by the end of the summer we'd be back. No, um, and all, all of us who are creative people were all very much in the same boat. Just is this going to be a living after? After a few months, um, we were seeing opera companies just shut down, uh, furlough a third of their staffs, and even the people who had day jobs, people like me, right, who who work in music but you know do a lot of this as a calling. I think um, we're kind of flummoxed and and creatively didn't know what to do. Everyone had things canceled, so I just put out a call on Facebook saying, "I'm going to start this series of, of very short pieces." Um, if you're interested, let me know. I thought I'd have 20 or 30 people interested. It was over 100, um, of which I've a year later finished 75. So I'm, I'm, st I'm still trying to finish the last 25 or so. Um, and you were the 16th in line, Melissa. Yay! And uh, the, <laughs> the, the, the wonderful thing is um, all of these were so different. I, ha I had requests from people. Well, there was a soprano who, who messaged me. Uh, she was stuck in a New York apartment with three other friends who were also singers and together they were SATB. So I wrote, she wrote the, the text and I wrote very short things. Um, there are pieces for EWI synth, an electronic wind instrument, a concertina, um, a family of musicians, uh, piano and basically a piano quartet. So all sorts of things. And it was so fun and so rewarding. And it was a little bit, I hope, of a uh, a light through the storm, right? Of all the craziness, just a little bit of of uh, tickling that creative yeah itch we all have. And so you, um, as we talked about what your uh, piece would look like, you directed me to these three poems, "Joy Song" by Ewan, mm -hmm. which I have to thank you for introducing me to his poetry. It is, it, I know we'll talk about it in a minute, but it is it is so musical and overwhelming often in its beauty. And so setting these texts, Joy Song, the uh, 16th iteration of the Quarantine Miniatures was just such a joy. Oh, yay. And uh, how that happened was I you know, saw your post and thought, well, that's really interesting. And obviously as a singer, text is something that's very important to me and just co the combination of the moment and wanting something new, I thought, you know what? I want to ask Ewan to see if he would write something just for this project because I also have fallen in love with Ewan's words uh, and the spirit behind them. And I thought, worst he'll say is no. So I said, hey, Ewan, what do you think about this? And Ewan, what did you say? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it took me long to say yes. I think nope. there are you got a yay with about lots of A's on the way, on the way back, you know? <laughs> so what was the inspiration for these joy, which, you know, people, you're going to love these, trust me, it's two minutes of heaven, but... Um. <laughs> well, I'm really excited because I've got my own wee miniature here. It's number 57, a double bass piece. Oh, okay. Ripples yeah. upon ripples. <laughs> Yes, I'm just looking at it now. And it's got a glissando as well from the bottom east string. I'm a very happy man. You know, it's, <laughs> it's a fun glissando today, you know. Um, no, I mean, what was, what do you mean, like, in terms of the inspiration for the actual text, is that what you think? <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, look at listening in the window, you know. I'll look out over the sea here and what's it, you know, not kind of the sea, it's a very wide river called the Seven, and it's always alive with birdsong. Mm. You know? um, and that's why, you know, and flocks of stuff, we get murmurations and things, because there's a very deep valley just behind the house, um, right down to the River Wye and then the Seven beyond it. So you've got this incredible chorus going on all the time. So Sister Bird was the first one, you know, um, 
and anything about love get me started on love and memory you know because we are so much a sort of layerings of all the people that we've loved you know um, I've been thinking, I mean, and thinking about that happens all the time, you know, and so that was what number two was about, you know, uh, and of course the whole world sings of love, you know, sings of, of, of love. And then the third one was, um, I'm, you know, in the midst of some of the sort of troubles that we've had in Britain and the States, you know, one of the absolute inspirations for me is to get his burger dress. So, there's a one. There's one thing. Um, it does not perish. Shall not perish from the earth. And uh, I remember standing in front of the Lincoln Memorial, reading those words that they carved, and I was, you know, I was just lost. You know, I just sobbed. Um, so they're very resonant, and they're very much, you know, shall not perish. Shall not perish from the earth. And you'll find that in that that sort of a pulse there. Um, so those were the sort of. But again, you see, it's like what happens as I think in like a, it's like motifs, verbal melodies. So, and I was fascinated. I'm fascinated by one one particular 20th century composer whose music I adore is, is Anton Webern. And I'm fascinated by how he writes songs and these tiny little motifs that he uses. Uh, I also, 19th century, my favourite 19th century poet is not a British one, it's the fabulous Emily Dickinson, <laughs> you know, um, and she packs so much power into a very small space, the, she's a genius, <laughs> you know? um, and her work is, I love that letter she writes, you know, can you... Can you spare a moment to tell me if my music, my words are alive? They certainly are, Miss Dickinson. They certainly are, because she's an absolute inspiration for me in terms yeah. of, and, and that's why this is a huge challenge. I'm going to shut up in a moment. I promise. Shut <laughs> <laughs> me off here, um, but I just wanted to say that, you know, um, this sort of thing, idea of miniatures, you know, about really got me back to the roots of my poetry in the sense that you were thinking about what can you pack into a very small space mm -hmm. powerful and living and vibrant and breathed and musical yeah would you do me the honor if it's nearby or if you remember it of just reading number three for us oh yay <laughs> Number three is my favorite. It's also the last one, but I, I you know, that that line, those lines are just gorgeous. Okay, um, yeah, sure. Um, though it does not perish one, that one. Yes. I, I wanted to tell you. It does not perish from the smile of the earth, the laughter of light dancing in the blood. Okay. Mm. Thank you. It is so gorgeous. Which then takes us to Mark. You got these things in an email and you said. <laughs> oh, they're amazing. I love them. Yeah. Um, there are certain words and phrases that composers see and just kind of glob onto, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's automatic. Anything that has a, words like dance and light right and so it's always a temptation to just go on forever with those words and and many composers have right so mm -hmm. how many masses do we have where <laughs> seven minutes is just three words and that's yes. the beauty of music right is because yes. it is this meditation on these little words and so Ewan's music and I'm looking at his yeah his music right his poetry shows that he does have a very musical mind and I love the fact that all the librettists I work with regularly all have strong musical backgrounds mm -hmm. um and and ewan is just just like that you can tell he's thinking um along these musical lines like he was saying earlier so the word sing right at the beginning sis, he, he he speaks of the the bird outside the window there sister bird taught me to sing and it's so tempting to just take the word sing and go with it but i knew this had to be a miniature and so i let the the mandolin the accompaniment be the, yes. be the thing that that sings right and that does all this stuff as melissa just states right there um murmur joy the word joy we can have some fun with as it leaps up into the higher register i won't go through word for word but 
the word sings comes back several times. So mm -hmm. in the wind sings in, in the second movement, mm -hmm. beloved, the wind sings your sacred shining bird song name. So in that one, I, I do let the word sings become more. Um, yeah. And then the word light in the last movement, as you and just read, that's such a powerful, impactful word, word has been from all those Latin settings of Luke's. Yeah. Uh, and then, and then here we are, right? So with the word light and man, in the middle of last year, I think no, there, there's no greater antidote metaphysically speaking than light itself, right? In, in the darkness we were all in and mm -hmm. have, have remained in many ways. Yeah. Oh, all that is just so beautiful. Thank you.